Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you again this morning. We have quite a few visitors with us. We'll welcome them later on. But over here, what we do first, as you know, always, we just focus our attention on our Lord Jesus Christ. It's His time, it's His place, it's His meeting with us. And so we'll just read this one verse from Malachi. And wow, it has a lot to do with what we're going to look at later on. So it's from Malachi chapter 4. And I'm going to read verse 2 for us. And you might have an idea in your minds what this means. But after today, we will really understand what it means. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in His wings. And you will go out and leap like calves released from the storm. The Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in His wings. So let us pray together. This is an open time of prayer. Just as you feel to express your heart to the Lord, speak with Him, praise Him, thank Him. We have much to thank Him for. Good morning. to happening what are we looking forward to commemorating really this week what are we what what time is it Easter what is it that we think of over Easter time yes, Beth? Jesus dying on the cross right now who can tell me something something tore when uh, Jesus died on the cross. What was it that tore in half, Shekela? The, the curtain in the temple. What did you want to say, David? Do you all know that? That the curtain in the temple tore? Who knows what direction it tore? From? From top to bottom. That's right, from top to bottom. Isn't it interesting that it also said about Jesus Jesus' robe, or his tunic, it said it was woven in one piece from top to bottom. That's right. So we have this tearing of the curtain in the temple, but what did it mean? What did it mean? Suddenly the temple curtain was torn. What did it mean, Toby? What do you think? Right, so no more sacrifice, Shekela. That anybody, that anybody could have access to God. Is that what you want? We're also thinking, honey. Mm -hmm. Right, so I want to tell you about something else that tore as well. Something else tore. But I wonder whether you can think what it was. What do you think it was? We have... Something else that tore, and I was just looking for it here in the Bible. So if we go to John, we go to John, and we read there about something else that tore. Um, No, I don't think it's in John, actually. Um, we'll have to look maybe in Mark. 
just lost it. So who knows of the adults maybe, someone might know uh, what we're talking about. We go look in Mark. Hmm? The high priest. No, no, no. The high priest. So we've got to go and have a look at... I uh, wonder where we'll find that. There we go. So in Mark, I'm going to read to you from Mark. Now listen to this. This is very interesting. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. The high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we, do we need any more witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. Oh, wow. So the high priest tore his clothes. Did you know about that? We all know about the tearing of the curtain, but what about the high priest tearing his clothes? Now, there's an interesting thing about that, because you know what it says in, in Leviticus? Where's Leviticus, in the New or the Old Testament? Emma? Old. Now, listen to this carefully. The high priest tore his clothes. When Jesus said what he said. But here in Leviticus 21 and verse 10 it says, The high priest, the one among his brothers who has had the anointing oil poured on his head and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments, must not let his hair become unkept or tear his clothes at all. Not allowed. Oh my. Actually, there's a curse that comes on the people for that. Uh, it says in another place, it says that the people will die if he does that, if he tears his clothes. And there he tears his clothes. But what did we read this morning? What did, uh, I think it was, was Katie and Sarah that read to us. What was the interesting thing about Jesus' robe? Yes, it was woven in one piece, and the soldiers said, let us not tear it. So what sense do you make of that? The curtain tore, and that meant? Yes, we can go to God. What does it mean that this high priest has now torn his clothes? But Jesus is, is not torn. What do you think that means? It's a bit difficult, eh? So the high priest is now not the high priest anymore because there wasn't actually one after him again, which was quite interesting. He tore, he tore his robes, but but what does it say about Jesus' robe? And what does that tell you, David? <clears throat> ah, he's the high priest. Yes, he's the actual high priest. Isn't that amazing? So which two things tore when Jesus died on the cross? The curtain and the high priest's clothes. Have you ever known that? Have you ever thought about that? So not only do we now can we go to God directly and no problem, but Jesus is actually the real high priest because his robe was not torn. Amazing, eh? I think it's wonderful. Now we can go to God and the Lord Jesus himself brings us. There is no longer a priest needed. That's why I have to bring you to the Lord Jesus. That's all. That's my job. And that's all. So who's going to pray for us? David is going to pray for us. Thanks, young man. Amen. So there's your picture of Jesus and the high priest tearing his clothes and your little verse. So 
Eli will obviously <laughs> the victor. <laughs> Thanks, David. Interesting fact that, isn't it? That the uh, high priest tore his robes, but it said it was never to happen. And Jesus' robe remains intact. Now this morning I wanted us to go and look at a few things. And let's start with Malachi, where I read to us for a start. Read to us there in Malachi 4, verse 2. And of course it says there, The Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in His wings. Healing in His wings. Now I have often thought, and I'm sure you have also often thought, of the robe of righteousness. And of course we read about that in Isaiah 61, and maybe you just want to go there with me. Let's just go read what it says there about this robe of righteousness. And we read in Isaiah 61 and from verse 10. I delight greatly in the Lord, my soul rejoices in my God. For He has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. Wonderful. Garments of salvation and a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. That's marvelous. The robe of righteousness. And of course, we also read about this robe of righteousness in Revelation. And let's go there. We go read in Revelation about this clothing. And we find in several places actually it speaks about this issue of the clothing. Was it in 20 or was it in 21 that I saw a reference there? There's also, of course, a reference in 22. Thanks, girls. 14. And 14, you want to read that to us, guys? Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Right. Wash their robes. Then, of course, here we have earlier, and this is in 7. 7 verse 9 and further, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, tribe, people, language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And so on and so forth. Alright, so let me ask you about this robe of righteousness. What has been your idea... What is your idea that you have about it? Is it something that I can see? Is it something you have that you're going to get later on? Give me some pointers. Is it something we have now? Say if we read Isaiah there, you have arrayed me garments of salvation, robe of righteousness. Or is it something that we think, oh, we're... We'll get one of those in the end. How do you see that? We have it now. Elizabeth says we have it now. Let me see, Elizabeth. <laughs> I'm wearing it. <laughs> Who else says we have it now? A robe of righteousness. Okay, so I would agree with that, but don't you think that sometimes we sort of feel, well, it's, it's more of a theoretical robe because, because actually, you know, uh, 
underneath there is all sorts of gooey stuff, but it covers all of that, and, you know, it's my robe of righteousness. Isn't that maybe in the back of your mind how you think about it? <laughs> Christine is, is honest. <laughs> and I wonder whether in some of us there is that idea, thank you, oh Lord, thank you for this wonderful robe of righteousness. Um, it's not quite visible at the moment, but of course, you know, you know, and so on. And we have this idea that the robe of righteousness is a little bit more theory than practice. And we have to say, no, 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 really, I have it on. I promise, I, I promise, I do have it on. My garments of salvation and my robe of righteousness. And I want us this morning to get rid of that idea, of that theoretical idea, get rid of that idea in your mind that it's a little bit iffy, you know. Well, I do have it, but I do have it. It might not quite be visible, but I do have it. I do have it in theory, of course, you know, it says so in the Bible, and so on and so forth. Those thoughts are not a very strong foundation. But I want us to look this morning at the clothing, at this robe, that God gives us. And they are actually the garments of Christ. It says, clothe yourself with... It is Christ that we clothe ourselves with. But anyway, let's look a little bit at His garments. This morning we learned that He is actually the real high priest. In Zechariah, what did we read? We read that Aaron and his sons were only symbols of what was to come. The branch, it says there, in that passage. All right, and of course we find that even with Aaron, uh, with Joshua there in Zechariah, he gives him the robe, gives him a new robe, the high priest. <coughs> but he says, no, 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 you're just a symbol of what is to come. So our high priest is Christ. And of course, if you go into the Old Testament, you will find that there are all sorts of very clear instructions how this priest, the high priest, had to be closed. First of all, the priests, and then the high priest had even more further prerequisites. Who can give me a few of those? The high priest's clothing. Very specific instructions. Very. The? That's right. That's right. Against the skin. The ephod, that's right, specific blue. And then there was that other tunic with the tassels on. And then there was the breastplate. And then there was this thing that was on his head. But anyway, very specific instructions. And if those things are just signs, then we must go and look at them a little bit closer because it says we also receive this robe of righteousness. Garments of salvation. And especially one thing I want to change your minds about this morning, or scripture will. I don't have to do it. Now let's go look, first of all then, at this amazing undergarment that Jesus had. And of course we find that there in John 19, it was really quite peculiar. It was woven in one piece from top to bottom. It was not stitched together. It was woven in one single piece from top to bottom. And of course, it actually has specific mention, doesn't it, here, with these soldiers. They took the rest of his clothes, dividing it into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining, the undergarment. In fact, in fact, in Hebrew thought, if you only had your undergarment on like this, you were seen to be naked. You were seen to be naked. That is why when it speaks about the old prophets, it was one who had to go naked, actually, don't worry, he had an undergarment on there. Because if you only have your undergarment on, you are seen to be naked. So this undergarment 
was seamless, woven in one piece from the top to the bottom. All right, let's start there. So, in our clothing, where do our cloth where does our clothing tend to tear? Yes, actually, there's an English saying, isn't there? You are coming. But it seems. <laughs> now, in Christianity, we also say that, oh, now I'm coming apart at the seams this week. You mustn't come visit me, Werner. Next week is better. <laughs> this week, I'm coming apart at the seams. Then I say, oh, then I want to visit you this week. <laughs> coming apart at the seams, and you're quite right. Seams stitched together. So here's the first clue for you about this garment. Because believe you me, we also get, he clothes us properly. Actually in Isaiah, it does use the plural, garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness. Also with Joshua there in Zechariah, it's in the plural. So we see, alright, the Lord wants to clothe us properly. So there's an undergarment for you, Daniel. A little bit more weaving needs to take place for Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> but it is woven. It has not got a single seam in it. And this is very important as we move towards Sunday or towards Friday anyway. This issue, we're going to read again about this at one of the stations. Where he says, they divided my garments among them and so forth. But this garment was seamless. How often have I not seen people's Christianity a little bit, sort of, stitched together? Oh, I've got this, a piece, and, and, and then I've got that piece, and I'll stitch them together over there, and this one, it looks more like a patchwork than a garment that is woven in one piece from top to bottom. It, work, it looks a little bit like a patchwork. Okay? Hi. Um, so, what I want you to do is think of this. It's the opposite to a woven garment. is a garment that is actually stitched together. This piece, that piece, then there's that piece, then there's that piece. I'm looking at uh, Erika's shirt. It's got a lot of stitching all over. It's got a lot of seams. But that's right. It's at the seams where we come apart. So, Jesus' garment... Woven in one piece, not a single seam. So our undergarment that we have to receive cannot be stitched together. It has to be woven in one piece from top to bottom. It reminds us of that message we looked at not long ago from Genesis 15, wasn't it? Where... It says, and Abraham believed God and he, well it's translated... Credited, it's translated, imputed, but the Hebrew word kashab, that is in the background there, which is translated as imputed or credited, is the word to weave, to plait, to interpenetrate. So actually in the Hebrew language it says, and Abraham believed God, and God wove righteousness into Abraham. Ooh, sounds very similar, doesn't it? This undergarment, close to the skin was woven in one piece. No stitching. No stitching. So, I want to show you an amazing reference in Isaiah to this undergarment of Christ. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah 11 and verse 5. Who's going to read that for us? You can read it for us, Ross. How about that? 11 and verse 5. Yeah. This is the King James. Um, and righteousness shall be the girdle of, of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. How far do you want me to go? That's it. Oh, that's it. That's verse 5, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So whose Bible has undergarment? Oh, there we go. There's one. Yes, that's actually what it says in the original. Here's undergarment was righteousness but it repeats the same word again so what are the two things that we read there in Isaiah 11 5 righteousness and 
Faithfulness. That's that's the original Hebrew of Isaiah eleven five. It says righteousness his undergarment, faithfulness his undergarment. Oh wow. So what we start to see is that there is something very significant about the clothing. Very significant about the clothing. It is not just to clothe you. Neither is it to cover you. Because that's what we also have in our minds about the robe of righteousness. It covers a multitude of sins. As long as I have my robe of righteousness on. Oh, there we go. I look better. But hang on a minute. We have to start close to the skin. We can't start with a clothing another layer removed. No, 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 no. What does it say about Joshua, the high priest in Zechariah? What did they first have to do? It says, take it off. Take off the one he's got. It's filthy. They didn't say, all right, let's put another one over that one. Then he'll look better. <laughs> no, and the Lord does the same with us. Let us start close to the skin. You need a woven piece that I will weave close to the skin. Lovely. Righteousness was his undergarment. Faithfulness, his undergarment. Wow, that's in Isaiah. Let's go to Deuteronomy 20, 22. Who's going to read that for us? One verse, verse 11. This is another little clue for you. Wow, so this also has to be in place. Deuteronomy 22, 11. Thanks, Danny. Do not wear clothes of wool and linen woven together. Oh, wow. That was an instruction regarding the priest's clothing, okay? So what could you not do? Mix. Mix elements, yeah? No, you can't even mix the wool and the linen. It has to be absolutely pure linen. What idea do we get from that? So, Lord, you know... I I've, I've also contribute, you know, Lord, to this. There's, there's a bit of you, a bit of me. That's woven in here, Danny. And it also makes you perspire. No, it doesn't. But they weren't allowed to perspire either. So it had to be just linen. So wool makes you itch. So you had have had some itchy priests. <laughs> has to be pure. No mixing in that undergarment. Sorry, Daniel. Just him. No contribution of your own. It will defile it. No, sorry, it's a mixture. It is no good. Unacceptable. Wow. Right. Now, let's get to the interesting part here. So there we have this undergarment. Wow, close to the skin. Yeah, these are the garments of salvation he, wrote, he clothes us with, so it's woven. And his righteousness is woven into the very undergarment that we wear. Starts close to the skin. Now let us go and read. Uh, we're just going to refer to the passage we read in Luke chapter 8. Let's go there. And of course we know the story well. It is this woman who uh, has had this problem. And of course she's there and uh, she touches Jesus as we read. But there is a little key that you need to take note of. And I hope most Bibles will have this. So as Jesus was on his way, I'm reading from Luke 8 from uh, verse 30, uh, 42. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. But no one could heal her. And of course, I think Mark, if we ever read that, it said that she had consulted this and that and paid lots of money and so on and so forth. Couldn't be healed. She came up behind him and touched the, what does it say? Edge. Whose Bible does not have edge? Him. Order. Him. Fringe. Fringe. Lovely. Lovely. 
Now, this is the amazing thing about this robe of righteousness that goes under the underwear of righteousness and faithfulness, which is woven. The Lord wants to clothe us properly, remember? Start with that undergarment. Now what comes on top of that? Now the key is this. It says there, she touched the fringe edge hem of his cloak. Now the word there is kanaf in the Hebrew. K-A-N-A-P-H. And let's go and look at Numbers 15 to get an idea of what this was. Because there's another reference to it. Numbers 15 and 37 to 41. And I might just read that for us just to save a bit of time. So... The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. You will have these tassels to look at so you will remember all the commands of the Lord that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by going after the lusts of your own hearts and eyes. Then you will remember to obey my commands and so on and so forth. So there it actually says tassels. All right. I want to show you in Zechariah chapter 8. We have a similar reference. And you know what? The same word is used. Who's got Zechariah 8 for us? And verse 23. Zechariah 8. Thanks so much. Oh, Christine, no? I got it. Thanks, Dale. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days ten men from every language of the nations shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Wow, so we have this issue of in that those days they will take hold of a Jew by what? Well, whose Bible has got something other than sleeve? Him. Him. Well, that word, you've got robe. That word is exactly the same word as the one we read there in Numbers. It, kanaf means the edge, the fringe. That is what the word kanaf means, the fringe. But you know what? The word kanaf also means when, in reference to birds, it refers to their wingtips. But kanaf means the fringe. So here we have on the fringes of his robe, and of course there's a Greek word, um, which is... It's a word that was exactly translated for the purpose of kanaf. It's a Greek word that means exactly the same. The fringe. And it's that Greek word used here where the woman touches Jesus. She touches the fringe of his garment. Okay. Kanaf means fringe. Where else do you think this morning, when we started, did we read about Kanaf? How did we start the service? In Malachi. And what did it say? He rises with healing in his wings. Well, it's Kanaf there. He rises with healing in the fringe of his garment. The same fringe that the woman touched. Look at this. It makes it even more interesting. Ruth chapter 3. Who's got Ruth chapter 3 for us? Amazing reference there. Kanaf, again, the fringe. Ruth 3 and verse 9. Who's got that for us? Thanks, Anna. No. You can look in the index. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Ruth 3, 
and verse 9. Ah, lovely. The word is kanaf. Take your maidservant under the fringe of your garment. So, he puts the fringe of his garment over her as a... and Because then she says, you are my kinsman redeemer. And so he puts the fringe of his cloak over her. Kanaf again. So, hang on. In Malachi, far from... Well, maybe I should ask you, what have you thought in the past it means when it says in Malachi, he rises with healing in his wings? Like a bird or... Well... So that was what you associated it with. The word in Malachi is kanaf, it is fringe of a garment. So he rises with... Healing in the fringe of his garment. Uh, we have the proof before us in Luke, don't we? The woman touched the fringe of his garment and she was healed instantly. And there was power where? In the fringe of the garment. Power in the garment. It's amazing the study, if you, if you go and look into this, but the fact of the matter is that we need to understand that there is healing and there is cleansing in the robe of righteousness. That's what we need to understand. It is not a covering that is put over you to cover all. It's not a cover all. Don't worry, because in the robe itself there is what? There is healing, there is power, there is working. You know what I mean? So, this morning we're realizing, hang on a minute, this robe of righteousness is not only for justification, as we would want to see it always. Oh, I am justified, I have my robe of righteousness. What does it also do, Christine? It sanctifies. Wow! There's power in this robe, man! Power in the fringe. He rises with healing in his wings. We thought the robe of righteousness is like a coverall, a theoretical coverall that we have, and that's cool. It's great. I must just tell myself that over and over. No, don't worry. It has cleansing and healing properties even in the robe. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that give you much more hope? I think it's beautiful. Anna? Oh wow, that's very interesting. I've never done that before. <laughs> I don't make So isn't that just beautiful? Not only is there is it a robe of righteousness which you now are arrayed in, that robe has cleansing and healing properties. It not only justifies, it does, but it also sanctifies. It's glorious. Now I want to take you somewhere, and this is so interesting. Let's go to Matthew 23, because this is typical. I want to read to you what the Pharisees did. But of course it was pointless. Matthew 23 and 5, who's got that for us? That's our last reference, Matthew 23 and 5. Thanks, Gerard. Everything they do is done for men to see. They make their apparel. If a lecture is. And the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor, the banquet, and the most important seats in the synagogue. They love to be greeted in the marketplace and to have men call them rabbi. Aha! So you know what? They like to make their kanaf very long. Yeah, long and broad. To what? What is the idea behind that? To look super holy. Mm. To look very holy. That's right. But the problem with their with their kanaf was that there was no. There wasn't enough kanaf. 
There wasn't enough enough. <laughs> Not enough enough. <laughs> well, it's interesting. They they make it long. Oh look, I've got lots of this. Actually, you've got nothing. Nothing. But isn't it interesting? The tie up. They realise that they can enough. There's something in it. There's something about. Oh, I've got a long one. Revelation, oh, yeah? Revelation 3, Laodicea, increased with good but needed nothing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Of course, we find this issue that it says there, you say I have everything, I have need of nothing, but you do not realize that you are pitiful, poor, blind, mm -hmm. and naked. 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 Mm -hmm. naked. Let me give you clothing. And this morning, of course, the Lord is saying, let me give you clothing. Not just a robe of righteousness that covers. No, I'll start next to the skin. A woven, seamless undergarment. Which will cause you not to come apart at the seams. <laughs> and an overgown to go over that. A robe of righteousness which has power in its wings. No, in its fringe. Which cleanses and heals. Isn't that beautiful? And that's the kind of clothing that God has in mind for you and for me. And I think it's beautiful. Now you also know what it means when it says He will rise. And of course, as we look forward to next Sunday, that's what we'll see. He rises with healing in His robe, in His kanaf. There's power there for you and me cleanse and to heal. So I hope that the Lord will even go a little bit further with you this week with this issue as you do your own personal study too. But let us just come before the Lord now as we have another time of open prayer just as we close. And I wonder